So let me start. Uh, so the title is Presymplectic AKZ form of uh, Einstein gravity. Uh, this work, uh, this is based on a recent work uh, with Alexei Kotov and some earlier works of uh, my and uh, of mine and uh, another one together with uh, Kostya Alkalaev. Okay, what are motivations? So uh, we know that theories of fundamental interactions including gravity and mill strings and theory has been theory and all possible uh, reasonable <clears throat> candidates which are considering now are gauge theories. There is a deep relation between interactions and, and gauge symmetries. Uh, so it's, uh, it's somewhat inevitable to study gauge theories. And by now it is uh, almost, uh, there is almost a, uh, um, agreement between experts uh, that uh, battalion wilkowski formalism, battalion wilkowski approach, or its Hamiltonian version, which is called battalion fracking wilkowski it gives a probably most general and powerful framework for analysis of gauge theories, including issues like quantization, deformations, anomalies, renormalization, etc., etc. Uh, but also it uh, has a it has a, a strong ties to geometry and uh, graded uh, super geometry. And it's also interesting from a purely mathematical per perspective. And we know that many, many mathematicians study, uh, study, this, uh, study this approach and employ it for various problems, even beyond the original gauge theoretical framework. Uh, it was observed long ago that uh, if we are dealing with uh, topological models, sometimes their BV formulation can be brought to a very concise and geometrical form. By now, this is called a KZ form or a KZ construction. It, uh, somehow it looks like all the BV structures, they naturally emerge from, uh, from a certain very simple, typically finite dimensional supergeometry. So it's uh, tempting to say that it reveals underlying structures of gauge theories. And another interesting feature of this AKZ uh, construction is that in some sense it unifies uh, both Lagrangian and Hamiltonian formalism. So it's uh, somewhat more general than the one we, uh, we usually use in uh, in, 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 in usual mechanics in field and, and field theory. Uh, one can try to do the same. Unfortunately, this all only applies naively to topological models. So one can naturally ask if it is possible to employ uh, AKZ formulation for theories with local degrees of freedom for non-topological models. And it turns out that it is possible the construction uh, is known. It, it uh, deals with uh, jet bundle BRST formulation of uh, local gauge field theory, and it goes under the name of parent approach, in which you can indeed represent your system even with local de degrees of freedom as an AKZ sigma model. But the price to be paid for that is quite high because uh, the uh, because uh, the target space becomes infinite dimensional, so we lose part of uh, attractive uh, features of a KSZ, where a very simple, very very simple supergeometrical structure determines everything. So there is an interesting alternative. And, uh, yep. Um, <clears throat> on the previous page, still. Uh, it's a question remark maybe at the same time. So uh, if I understand correctly, there's another important difference to, to the usual set theory. It's not only it's infinite dimensional target, but also the, the action functional is not just the sum of a charge from the source and the target, right? Because it, now that the, the charge of the target becomes um, odd time dependent. And I suppose it also implies that the equations of motions are not morphisms of Lie algebra anymore. Is it correct? Uh, uh, yes, but it is okay. I, 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 of course, you are correct. Uh, 
but it's not very important in this perspective because you can safely forget about this just by parameterizing your system or indeed as you as you noticed you need to go for slightly more general what's called q bundle or not not necessarily locally trivial or sometimes it's called twisted ATSZ. but no, no, no but I, I think i think more I, th I think the equations of motions or in the a cassette theory are morphisms of Lie algebraids of q bundles no of, no, of q manifold sorry yes and yes. and the gauge symmetries are homotopies in that category yes and i think yes. this is broken here and i think this is a very important feature of of the yeah, but, but if you parameterize your system to begin with, you make it diffeomorphism invariance by adding uh, extra pure gauge degrees of freedom. This is a well-known uh, thing. You just kill all this and you can recover this theory. It's it's not no, very... Anyway, we are going to talk about... I think it will not be... A, the gauge symmetries will not be homotopies. It will, everything. It will be just a KSZ, but you will have extra fields and you will recover what you want by choosing certain gauge if you want. But it's no. a really different discussion. I can uh, I can comment on these, but it's really not, not the direction I, I, I'm okay. interested now because what I'm going to talk about is diffeomorphism invariant system. But, but you, I agree with you, it's, there is a subtlety. It's just not relevant for this talk. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the interesting alternative, which uh, which which happens, is uh, that what you can do, you can actually, in usually KZ setting, even with finite dimensional target space, you can allow for degenerate symplectic structure. That's what's called presymplectic uh, presymplectic structure, and it turns out that uh, Lagrangians encoded, ATZ-like Lagrangians in this case, may, be, may describe interesting uh, theories with degrees of freedom, even if the target space, uh, target space is finite dimensional. So actually it gives quite an elegant super geometrical construction of frame-like Lagrangians. However, uh, this is not completely satisfactory because this is just a super geometrical construction of, of the Lagrangian. But what we are interested in is really the full scale BV formulation because we do need BV to study theory in particular to quantize it and etc. etc. Okay, so uh, uh, <clears throat> let me start the introduction of part after the after the uh, first comments. So let me very briefly, I'm sure everybody in the audience is essentially familiar, but let me briefly remind you what AKSZ is. is. And, uh, and just to fix notations. Okay, so there are two ingredients in the minimal. I make everything maximally simple. So there is a super manifold target space, this M. I introduce coordinates for simplicity to, to give some formulas in coordinates. It is equipped with symplectic structure, possibly on, of degree n minus one. And here is a space time dimension. At the end of the day, eventually it will be space time dimension. Because it is symplectic, it is invertible, so there is an associated Poisson bracket. There is a BRST potential which satisfies this HM, which satisfies master equation. Here is sorry, here is a type which should be small sign or capital H change notation. Uh, in the language of uh, some people like this language introduced originally by Albert Schwartz of uh, QP structure. So Q structure is a homological vector field uh, induced by with the Hamiltonian HM and P is a Poisson bracket. And another super manifold is a source space. It's also, it also has degree. It also has both degree. It is a Q manifold. It is equipped with odd vector field DX. And uh, uh, it, it is homological and of degree one. And typically, and for sure in all examples I'll have today, it's uh, this source is just odd tangent bundle over the uh, over the real space time. And I'll use standard coordinates x and theta. Theta standing for the x. If you identify functions on t one axis forms, then these are the axes, and we are in n dimensions. Okay, uh, then uh, the trick of AKZ is to consider the super manifold of super, of super maps from the source to the target. 
So coordinates on these super manifolds are roughly speaking fields, and it's easy, it's natural to expand them with respect to theta, so they in a sense in homogeneous in homogeneous differential forms, and these are really fields and anti-fields and also our BV formulation, and that's what the uh, BV uh, the KZ BV master action look like. It's just a standard natural geomet very geometrical first order action where chi is the potential of the target space symplectic structure. So we pull it back and evaluate on the RAM as a, as a homological vector field, and then we pull back the, the target space BRST potential and then integrate. Okay, that's what it looks like in components. Uh, sorry, you can also, uh, you can, uh, you, you, the symplectic structure in the target space naturally determines symplectic stru structure of the space of supermaps. Equivalently, you can define anti bracket, and by construction, this uh, BV master action satisfies master equation, but now we are in field theoretical setting, so this is modular boundary term in general. Okay, uh, you can also define BLST differential directly in terms of uh, in terms of differentials on the source and on the target without employing the symplectic structure, and this gives the generalization of AKZ sigma model to the non-Lagrangian case where you don't necessarily specify bracket or action or whatever. You just have a Q manifold in the target, and this gives you equation give gives you a gauge system at the level of equations of motion, but this is not necessarily Lagrangian. So uh, when you let me remind you that when you interpret the, uh, the BV system, the fields which sit in Gauss degree zero are physical fields, those which in positive Gauss degree are Gauss fields and Gauss for Gauss, etc., and those which are in negative Gauss degree, they are antifields. So here, all these guys show up as different components of the expansion in target space. When we write target space coordinate, in, uh, uh, we write a map in coordinates, so the target space coordinate is a function of x and theta. Different components in expansion of, with respect to theta have different Gauss numbers, because theta also carries one unit of course degree and in particular if Gauss degree of psi a is k then the k form component is dynamical while the rest of the components are interpreted as ghost fields and antifields okay uh equations of motion as it was already mentioned because um, uh, have the following form and because omega is non-degenerate they indeed uh, take the form of uh, morphism of complexes or Q map, map, map of Q manifolds, where source and target are Q manifolds. So these are conditions, while gauge symmetries are trivial, trivial morphisms of complexes, which are of the following form. So equations of uh, equations of motion indeed have a natural homological or super geometrical, if you prefer, interpretation. But I, of course, all this is well known. But why I wanted to write this explicitly is because uh, is because here you see that there is a room. If omega, if this guy is degenerate, then this thing is not any longer correct. This error is not any longer correct, and you can describe slightly weaker equations then the Q uh, morphism conditions in a sort of natural and geometrical way. And that's precisely the, the, the way it works for non-topological systems. And even more specifically, because this guy here is in some generalized sense curvature. So what this equation tells us, so it's not any longer a zero curvature equation, but it's like part of curvature, but equation requires certain component of a curvature to vanish, and this component is singled out by the degeneracy of this omega. And in case of gravity, you can actually trace that uh, somehow this contains the Riemann curvature, and uh, this projector, uh, this, this omega singles out the Ricci, Ricci Ricci component, and indeed you recover Einstein equations that Ricci is equal to zero in such a uh, geometrical way. Okay, 
So what are features of, uh, of a KZ formulation? Is there is something deep about uh, the fact that it knows BV at the very deep level. So you don't need, you know, when you study Batalin Milkovsky formalism, you start with the gauge theory and then you start to add, you, you study it, you find, you find um, gauge symmetries, neutral identities, whatever, uh, reducibility relations, you then you introduce new variables, and then at the end of the day, you build your action and you introduce your anti bracket. But in AQZ, it's not like that. Everything comes automatically just from a simple super geometrical structure. And uh, all these fields, dots, and anti fields are just different components of these super fields of these super maps from source to the target. Uh, well, again, it is uh, it, it, in, in as important remark is that uh, it also knows a lot about Bialystical homology and in a nice form, in particular if you're interested in local Bialystical homology of the ones which are responsible for physically interesting objects. Of AK, if you do it in the case of AKZ sigma model, you prove that under some conditions, of course, global geometry is not taken into account, that uh, this local Bialystic homology is isomorphic to the just target space uh, homology of the Q field. So it's sort of... Uh, is it correct that... Is it correct that if the source manifold has a non-trivial topology, then everything is twisted by this cohomology of the source? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's a local statement, which I... Which I could Sorry? Say. It's a local statement, yes, that's what I said. I restrict to local analysis. You are right, of course, cohomology of the source and um, of the source enters the, the game. Uh, okay, uh, another interesting feature is that this ATZ construction, it... Um, as I already mentioned, it, it's in some sense a, a unified formalism, neither Lagrangian nor Hamiltonian, or both Lagrangian and Hamiltonian, if you prefer. And this, in fact, has a far-reaching uh, applications uh, in the context of gauge series with uh, boundaries. In particular, somewhat similar formalism was employed in the context of studying uh, boundary behavior of uh, fields and uh, in conformal geometry this, this this sort of this sort of issues which are natural in the context of ads cft correspondence and as also as i already mentioned there is a version which is non-lagrangian you simply uh, forget about symplectic structures, you apply forgetful functor if you prefer, and you end up with just partial differential equations with gauge symmetries. And uh, what this AKZ is, is a sort of BV extension of free differential algebras with constraints. And we know that these guys were actively studied in the context of supergravity, in the, in the context of high spin gauge theories, because they indeed given, of course, I don't mention just. Uh, applications in pure mass, which I'm not so familiar with. So it, these are like right, right structures in which were identified by physicists in some in some modern, reasonably modern applications. Okay, what about presymplectic? Uh, so the presymplectic generalization is almost straightforward. In fact, if you open the old paper, <laughs> the old AKZ paper, most of this part, you see that assumption that uh, symplectic structure is invertible is not needed. Most of the formulas just go through. So this is sort of naive statement that such generalization exists. But what is less naive is that there are meaningful examples. And uh, okay, so let me let me spell how it goes before giving these examples. Let me spell explicitly how it goes in case of uh, presymplectic uh, AKZ. So the, what what do we have in the target? It's again graded uh, graded supermanifold M with a now not necessarily non degenerate closed to form of certain gauss degree related to the space time dimension n it is equipped with homological vector field and the symplectic structure is q invariant and closed it follows that at least locally there exists a potential h like this uh, which is, uh, but, but not other way around. Before we started with H, and this determines Q as a Hamiltonian vector field, but now the uh, Hamiltonian vector, uh, the vector field Q and uh, symplectic structure omega determines H. 
Okay, uh, and the source is unchanged. We are still uh, we are still uh, using just T one X, where X is an n dimensional <coughs> space time manifold. Okay, as, as I already noticed, you uh, you as I already mentioned, you uh, introduce uh, you introduce BST like differential uh, in the same way, just determined by target space and source space Q structures. Uh, you introduce BV like action where sigma hat is a super uh, is a super map, so it depends not only on degree zero fields but also on non vanishing degree fields. Uh, now it's not clear in which sense it is, but I will go with must direction. But if you set to zero all fields of non vanishing degree, which means instead of super map hat sigma, you consider just uh, usual map, uh, then it gives you certain action, just classical action, depending on degree zero field. You also have, uh, on the space of super maps, you have symplectic, uh, pre-symplectic structure, now it can be degenerate, and on this space, this, uh, these, uh, these objects are related by the following compatibility conditions. Uh, so I refer to this stuff as pre-symplectic is its sigma model. In principle, one can consider, and uh, in the literature, People, well, people means probably again me and collaborators. Uh, we consider more some, some more general set of axioms. It's not clear if they are meaningful, but this is meaningful. Me, this is absolute minimum, which is very natural, and they don't need more than that uh, for now. Now the following uh, questions arise. Uh, first one: Is it also topological? In fact, uh, as I already said, it is not in general, and what this battalion wilkowski action, battalion wilkowski like action, this SBV, and this symplectic structure, which is also not a normal symplectic structure of battalion wilkowski has to do with actually BV. Can one give any natural interpretation of this? There is a question? Yep. So maybe one of, one of the important things, in order to make quantization of of this BB thing is that you have this BB Laplacian. So I assume that right now, if since it's presymplectic, you don't have something like the BB Laplacian here. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but you see, the thing is that, uh, strictly speaking, in the context of local field theory, it's actually not well defined this BV Laplacian. So realistically, I know that in the context of topological models, indeed, people succeed to give a uh, reasonable definition of this delta. But if you are in standard QFT setting, then it's somehow it does not exist. It's nice thing to play at the formal level or in uh, or in, uh, topolo in the case of topological models, but uh, if you do it re realistically theory, local theory with degrees of freedom, you can't define it. So in but this it's, sense, it's I just disregard these issues. But uh, but 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 show me where <laughs> where this BV Laplacian is well defined in field theory, non-topological, and then. But I'm talking about non-topological models, and then. I, I can think of what to do in presymplectic setting, but you are right. It's a good question. It's it's two points to to, to an interesting direction, but uh, I think there are issues even at previous stages. Let's say that's my opinion. Maybe I missed something important. Who knows? Okay. Uh, Yes, uh, so there are these two questions. So let me try to answer both of them. So first one is, uh, let me give you an example, and that's in the title of my talk, of uh, the situation where this action, not yet BV action, just action extracted from EKZ construction, is an interesting non-topological action, and more precisely, precisely the, 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 the gravity. So, uh, to, for this example, you take uh, as target space manifold, uh, you take a Lie algebra of Poincare or Ideas or Decita, whatever you want. Let's stick to Poincare for, for definiteness. Um, 
and uh, flip uh, the shift by one the degree so you are uh, you are on graded manifold all coordinates have degree one uh, coordinates xi and xi a and rho a b correspond to translations and Lorentz rotation generators of the algebra and instead of writing uh, in this language instead of writing Lie algebra relations you can write just the chevalier differential which no, which carries exactly the same information here it is this q it is nil potent of degree one it's a chevalier complex of this Lie algebra with trivial coefficients and the observation is that on this supermanifold, on this graded manifold, there is a Q invariant presymplectic structure, which is very simple. It is just this, where this VABC is just a Hodge dualization of a product of psi. Uh, you can actually trace that the invariance of this Q uh, comes from um, comes from invariance of this uh, total anti-symmetric tensor. On, uh, on, the, on the joint representation. Uh, and starting with this presymplectic structure, it, it's easy to guess the to guess the symplectic potential and BLST potential, which has the following form. Now let's consider map, not super map, because for the moment uh, I'm not interested I am not interested in BV. So the map should take this degree one coordinate to a one form on source space and uh, on, 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 on x on space-time, uh, degree one function on, source, on, on the source, and same with the row. So we get two, in components, we get two fields, two, two coordinates on this infinite dimensional manifold. It's not a super manifold because we are talking about maps, not super maps. So, and this is naturally interpreted as frame field and connection in gravity. So it's quite naive actually what I'm saying here. And if we restrict uh, two configurations, which is natural for, natural for gravity, where the frame field E is invertible, uh, we, can, we, we can check that we, if we compute everything, uh, we evaluate AKZ action, and we end up with this explicit form, which is a familiar uh, action, action of gravity in the form of Cartan vial. Sometimes it is also called Palatini Cartan, there are different versions, but colleagues taught me that first, in some sense, this section appeared in a very old work of Hermann Weil in 29, 1929, something like this. Uh, I didn't check it carefully, but some pieces, it's in German, but some pieces are <laughs> a scene of, of this in totally different notations. It is also Palatini in the sense that it is first order, but it's a, it's a Roman stuff. Okay, and then we come to, so indeed we see that this presymplectic AKZ nicely, uh, in, uh, nicely gives us theories with degrees of freedom, not, not topological theories. Now the question is what is the BV interpretation of this? If we now instead of maps consider super maps, so we, so super maps, so we activate uh, what is what is V A B of E? Ah, it is this dualization of product of. Uh, let me show you. Yeah, this thing. Instead of uh, instead of psi, you see, you put E. That's it. There, there's the frame. Uh, it's something like Hodge dual. Yeah, 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 yeah. Algebra something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's. Exterior product of frames and for target indices it is called the mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so now let's go to, to super maps to BRST setting and see what it the what the BRST extension, BV extension of this guy has to do with genuine BV formalism. And before do, for doing this, let me uh, let me make a remark that in fact usual BV has a simple generalization not maybe very deep where you allow for presymplect for regular presymplectic structure indeed uh, just let's take bv in terms of differential form so we have bv action we have brst differential s and symplectic structure omega then this is condition that s is a hamiltonian vector field s is uh, nilpotent i forgot to write it explicitly here omega is non degenerate and closed so this is just bv you can invert omega arrive at anti-bracket uh, and 
a master equation and all this will follow from this. Okay, but now let's take uh, omega, let, let us allow omega to be degenerate, but regular. So the kernel distribution has constant rank. So these are, th th this contains vector fields which are in the kernel of the symplectic structure. By construction, it, it is, a, by definition, it is involutive. And uh, the action S, it's a absolutely standard facts. Action S and symplectic structure are invariant under the distribution, preserved by distribution. So you can at least locally, again, I disregard global geometry, you can go to the space of leaves. Algebraically, it means you can see the functions and forms invariant with respect to the distribution. And you recover the symplectic geometry here. And uh, this is a normal BV. So omega, this omega m, the form induced on the space of leaves is already, is already uh, non-degenerate, so you recover normal BV formulation. Of course, in field theory, everything should be understood, modular boundary terms, etc. but uh, th this will not be, again, very important to me, so I work as if it were finite dimensional. So indeed, uh, one can think about, about non-regular, uh, generalization, but this is a separate issue. But if the generalization is regular, if the symplectic structure is regular, this is just another way to formulate usual BV. And physical interpretation is absolutely clear. You just uh, factor out the kernel distribution and you end up with normal BV, which you know how to quantize, how to, how to interpret, how to do everything. Okay, so it's a naive generalization. Uh, what is interesting is that you, strictly speaking, you don't need, uh, although it is important to know that somewhere deep inside in the quotient you do have this, uh, you do have this symplectic BV, you don't need to really quotient this explicitly. Because, for instance, if you want to formulate formal, formally path integral, you can just integrate this presymplectic BV action. The only thing, in addition to gauge fixing conditions, you need to take care, you need to supplement extra gauge conditions which kill these directions along the, along the kernel distribution. Because your, your, uh, your presymplectic BV action does not depend on this direction. And these directions are to be considered as pure gauge. So equally, you need to, you need to gauge fix them in the same way as you gauge fix the genuine gauge symmetries of your series. But otherwise, uh, this symplectic quotient is not really is not really needed, so you can just work like that. But technically, it is an important important thing because taking a symplectic quotient passing to the symplectic quotient is technically very difficult. It can be very difficult. In um, of course, in field theory, some care has to be taken because of this on infinite dimensional manifolds manifolds, etc. And this quotient can somehow touch locality and this, this is absolutely unexplored. But the situation which is absolutely safe is when this geometrical setting of presymplectic or finite dimensional presymplectic manifold, uh, which is regular presymplectic manifold, happens in the target space. So your fields, so your space of field configurations is map, uh, the space of maps from space-time X to your target space M, which is a regular presymplectic uh, manifold. Then you do all this quotienting and all your proofs there in M, in finite dimensional geometry, and you recover on the space of maps already to M, you recover usual BV, and again, you are absolutely safe. And uh, as we are going to see, this is exactly what happens in case of gravity. So uh, let me recall you. So we have this uh, AKZ for gravity, this target space, which is a Poincaré or the Sitter algebra, Chevalier-Lenberg complex for it, standard source. And uh, let's do the following trick. Let us introduce a, a super manifold, graded manifold M, which is a space of maps from one fiber. So I fix the point. In the, in the source space, so I just have purely odd space, just a tangent space with, uh, shifted, with shifted degree to uh, my algebra with shifted degree. So it's a finite dimensional manifold again. And all AKSZ space of fields is a space of maps from X to this M. So, so this is M. So I factorize the space of super maps into super maps 
from X to super maps from to this guy. Okay. Uh, and the crucial thing is that M is a finite dimension of the symplectic manifold. Uh, I introduce coordinates in a similar way using the same notations. In what follows, I drop these zeros if it does not lead to confusion for zero components. And again, there are coordinates which are going to be frame field and uh, and connection after I go to field theory again. So when we consider this, <coughs> these maps. Okay, and again, it is crucial that I uh, I define my M in such a way that E is invertible. So only uh, only points where E is invertible are allowed. So it's not a super manifold of all super maps, but only those which contain this non-degenerate, for, for which this component is non-degenerate. Just like in ATSZ, I just drop integration over X. I get presymplectic structure on this super manifold omega M. And the main statement at the technical level that this symplectic structure is regular with the condition that E is invertible. Uh, let me uh, recall that it's not entirely obvious because this structure, let me show you, this symplectic structure in dimension higher than three necessarily is proportional to some powers of Xi. For instance, in four dimension, it is linear in Xi. In, in three dimension, it is symplectic and we get the the usual chan simons form of, of, of gravity which is a ksz that's perfectly known but starting from four dimension when gravity has degrees of freedom this symplectic structure is linear in size so in the target space it's really not not regular and there is no it's not clear what to do with it it's highly non-regular it's even vanish at a, at a certain point where is it actually is the, the only point of this super manifold? Okay, so remind you there about five minutes left. Just to remind okay. you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, but the, the statement is that it is regular with this condition. When we consider the space of maps, despite the target space symplectic structure is not regular, this one is regular. And this is proved by studying it on a certain manifold. Uh, where you, you immediately observe that it has the right spectrum, which is needed for BD, and then you explicitly give the kernel distribution and show that it is also of constant rank. So the rank should be in balance, and uh, uh, and this distribution, in fact, comes also from target space and can be written explicitly in case of four dimension. So what we proved, we proved regularity. So our previous considerations apply. And indeed, we see that we are doing, we are dealing with just symplectic, uh, presymplectic BV, which is perfectly regular. It's all, all this passage to, uh, to symplectic quotient can be performed in the target space. And uh, the action, the BV action restricts to correct to to Cartan while action. One can show that it is proper. So standard statements tell us that we are dealing with a proper BV formulation for Einstein gravity, which is nevertheless a bit difficult to derive explicitly in full generality in terms of in, in intrinsic terms of this symplectic portion, because you need to coordinateize it, etc. But recall that it is not really needed. So we do get we, we do we we have given genuine BV interpretation. The only thing is that it is useful to introduce concept of BV presymplectic BV, which contains usual symplectic BV. And now we are perfectly fine. So for gravity, we do have we do have a nice finite dimensional AKZ construction. The only trick that it doesn't give BV, it gives us presymplectic BV, but it is nearly as good as usual BV. Okay, uh, at this point, and this is sort of concluding part already because I'm running out of time, uh, let me mention that in fact you can do the same for other series because it's very easy to write these presymplectic AKZ Lagrangians for other gener general gauge theories. So you may wonder if there is a rational why it works. How can you? Because what I did, I somehow guessed the answer. So you can you can ask uh, you can ask me how 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 have I uh, how have I done it? How uh, how I succeeded to guess it? Well, realistically, it's a long story. But now I know the systematic answer. And the systematic answer is, let's start again with BVBRST complex for 
for our gravity, for a change, for instance, with metric light, textbook material. Now we uh, then we take symplectic structure. In jet space terms, it's useful to think of this as a horizontal and form and vertical two form, they like this. A defined BRST vector, BRST differential, etc. And then the crucial point that what you have to do is to go to total BRST complex, where you sum up because it's a, it's a bi, it's a bi complex. You have horizontal differential on horizontal forms, and you have BRST differential. So 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 you, what you do, you sum up form degree and uh, Gauss degree, and then you solve descent equation to complete by descent forms, guys like this, your BV form. In such a way that this guy is a cycle of the total BST differential. And now we know that, in fact, out of total BST complex, we can always reproduce the, the original theory, the different formulation of the original theory. This is precisely parent formulation. You just consider non Lagrangian AKZ with such a target space. But now, uh, what you can do, you can you can uh, use the equivalence of BRST complexes. You can eliminate contractible pairs. And in terms of this parent formulation, this corresponds to elimination of generalized auxiliary fields. And this is an equivalence of uh, gauge field theories. So you go to a minimal model of this complex, which contains just two, two variables of Gauss degree one. This is a known object. This is uh, the ghost field and the first antisymmetric part of first derivative and wild tensors. All the other variables are gone. And indeed, you, you see that the respective ATZ sigma model is equivalent to gravity at the level of equations of motion. And then you ask, OK, but it is an equivalent complex. It should have the, 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 the original BV symplectic structure, which was completed to a total co-cycle should have a representative here because it's an isomorphism in cohomology. It's probably difficult to compute, but you can take into account degree, derivative order, some other general considerations, and you see that there is essentially one answer. And this is the one which we, uh, which we guessed. Uh, and uh, okay, it can be also viewed from different points of view, but you see these W's, they don't enter this presymplectic structure. So these are again the general direction. So realistically, from first principles, you do have infinite dimensional presymplectic ATZ model, but infinite amount of coordinates, this W, do not enter symplectic structure or ATZ action at all. So you eliminate them, you go to respective quotient at the in first step and you arrive at the symplectic model which I which I showed you the in the symplectic model, like is it model which I showed you from the very beginning. Okay, I afraid I don't really have time to discuss uh, to discuss the extraction of Hamiltonian formalism out of presymplectic. It's also possible, but there is an interesting uh, problem which is not fully understood in my opinion, that in this, if you do naively, if you want to extract according to the prescription, just going one dimension down, you encounter, you indeed find the FV phase space. But the presymplectic manifold sitting there is not regular, and this uh, non-regularity is known in the literature. It was recently studied by these gentlemen, and they think that uh, there is some deep relation between uh, this studying of boundary structure and this phenomenon, though it's typical to gravity because for simple theories, non-diffeomorphism invariant, it should go just in a straightforward way. Uh, so this remains for future study, and here are my conclusions and outlook. So what we showed, we showed that uh, presymplectic ATZ form of gravity naturally includes full-scale BV formulations through this presymplectic version, and in fact you don't need for applications to really go to this full-scale BV, but it is important to know that it is possible with just existence there, in which you need to make sure that you know what you are doing. Uh, this presymplectic BV indeed can be employed just like usual BV. It's probably it's a useful uh, generalization, interesting on its own, irrespective of AKZ. Uh, this uh, presymplectic AKZ can be identified as a subsector of the parent formulation associated to the minimal total BRST complex where differentials are summed up. And this presymplectic structure indeed you can trace uh, it 
uh, to it is a homotopy transfer of the BV symplectic structure completed by these higher forms obtained by uh, solving descent equation. Uh, it's clear, it's not really published, but it's clear that approach extends to rather general, rather general. Theories, and this is precisely the point which, if I understood correctly, Thomas mentioned in the beginning. If you are, if you don't want to parameter, if you are dealing with non-diffeomorphism invariant system, and you don't want to parameterize it to make it diffeomorphism invariant, so that everything is a KZ, you need to uh, generalize slightly. You need to consider more general Q bundles than locally trivial, not necessarily locally trivial Q bundles, in place of a in place of ATSZ. So the relevant object underlying is the presymplectic uh, pre uh, Q bundles over T1x equipped with presymplectic structures. Uh, and the last comment, uh, which I really did not explain, is that main structures of BFE formulation are also encoded in this presymplectic ATSZ, by it, but there are some interesting subtleties which are still under study. I don't pretend I fully understand what's going on there. Thank you very much for attention. Thank you very much. So, other questions? The people in the lecture hall? Uh, hi, Maxim. Um, I have Hello. a question at the very uh, beginning. Uh, when you said that, in a way, part of this work was already in AKZ paper. So, my question uh, regards uh, relates to this uh, Q, uh, thinking of this as QP structure. So, in, mm -hmm. if I was thinking about QP structure, could I say that this um, Presymplectic form which forces you to change the basic equation of motion. There is this part of the kernel there. To think there's a Q being expanded around something which is not equation of motion. So, like, I'm not starting about zero stationary point of Q, but starting with some constant. Um, I'm not sure I really understood you. Okay, at first glance, Again, I, I'm not sure I understood properly your question, so I'm tempted to say no, but maybe I just don't understand. Yeah, maybe, maybe I, there is something. No. Maybe we, we should discuss it separately. Okay, I will, I will send you. Uh, I, I, I'll need time to, yeah, to, to see. Okay. I, I see where you, where you go, but naively not, but maybe there is an next level. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Is there an online question? Okay, I have a question. Okay. Okay. Uh, your formalism is uh, related to so called BV gravity, uh, uh, Prevansky formalism, and uh, the loop quantum gravity. Uh, yeah, this is com my comment. Uh, it is a similar, I think it is similar formulation, but uh, that, uh, your, your formulation is more geometrical. Uh, uh, construction of the structure. You, 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 you are saying they, they use similar, similar uh, formats? So called, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, yeah, it's a com comment. Or, I didn't know, and, uh, I didn't know. Thank you. Know, you. Can you, you point you know, me yeah. at uh, references? Yeah, yeah. By mail, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so called. You, you, there is a B, BF gravity theory. Uh, you BF? Yeah. yeah. It, uh, the name is a Prevansky. Right. Uh, yeah. Are you referring uh, to the yeah, works yeah. by Friedel, um, these edges in, um, in uh, gravity reasons? They were a series of works recently. They also used presymplectic structure. Is that what? No, you are they, 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 yeah, uh, there's construction is uh, rather by by hand. Yeah, yeah. So, but maybe the we can construct more geometrically and unify the as a case uh -huh. construction. 
in yeah. Okay, thanks. So yeah. please, please let me know the references. But uh, I, I, I know that people now are actively trying to to employ these presymplectic structures. But what I'm not aware of is this AKZ, uh, really this AKZ simplex, uh, version of this and BV. Uh, this I'm not aware, of, but maybe I missed something. Yeah, one interesting thing is that uh, the your homorism can can we can your homorism give such a uh, action? Yeah, is it is the one. Okay, maybe one Question. comment. If you that's what I I didn't really talk about. If you try to go to B to BFV, if you go to one dimension, if you if you take your source space of. Uh, uh, co-dimension one so the, for instance your initial values of your in, in initial surface for your for your salary so you remove time then the symplectic structure indeed gives you the the in in the physical sector it gives you presymplectic structure which you would naturally obtain as a presymplectic current starting from cartan while lagrangian and that's what that's what, what is a usual starting point for people. They start with Lagrangian formulation, and then Lagrangian determines the conserved presymplectic current on the stationary surface. And for cartan weil gravity, it happens to be uh, precisely this, the, the, the physical sector of Hamiltonian version of this one. But this AKZ formulation I was talking about is more general because this symplectic structure is coming from target, it knows about like all of them, not only this presymplectic current, but also the BV, symplectic structure, BFV, whatever, they are all like packed, packed together. So it's probably it's the one on top from which I can derive any, anything else. It's, mm. it's more difficult to go other way around because it, 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 it includes solving descent equation, doing this, uh, uh the equivalence of complexes etc it's a lot of work but you can reconstruct everything but uh and you need to start with bv but once you're on top once you are in this uh presymplectic once you're in this akz formalism you have a very concise small symplectic structure on graded manifold and by integrating it over different surfaces you roughly speaking get different different structures which you otherwise you can derive from different perspectives, including so, the Hamiltonian.